we're going to talk about some of the forces that are acting on a crankshaft and uh, some considerations that we need to take when uh, inspecting the block and the crankshaft uh, together. First of all, as the engine uh, begins to accelerate, uh, the, the crankshaft has a tendency to move towards the rear of the block. So we can see that movement. It's at the front. The crankshaft, when we begin to accelerate, it tends to move towards the, the back of the vehicle. Now, if it's a manual transmission and we're uh, applying and releasing the clutch, we might have some movement in the opposite direction. So that, that natural movement and the movement during the operation of the clutch, we need to take... Uh, we need to place something in its uh, path in order to uh, prevent too much movement. Um, and, and what we do is we use um, what's known as a thrust bearing. So I've got a couple different examples. This uh, um, particular engine uses this style right here. And you may sometimes re hear this referred to as a thrust washer rather than a thrust bearing. So this is a, a, a side bearing, so it's going to apply um, where it's going to provide a machine surface to the side of the crankshaft as I um, as the crankshaft is moving in backwards or forwards direction. So it's going to have a nice uh, smooth uh, surface to go against this machine surface. So this particular bearing actually just slides right down inside here um, and uh, we have one on each side, so I'm going to place these in. The main bearing caps would then also have, and that's what I've got here, this would belong in the main bearing cap, and it would uh, slide just like this. So it would sit, this is actually this side, so it's going to sit, sit right there with the main bearing cap. Okay, so once I've installed both of my um, thrust washers, That should now prevent the crankshaft during clutch application and during um, engine acceleration. There shouldn't really be a lot of movement in that. That movement, there's a specification for each engine. That movement is known as the end play of the crankshaft. So how much play or how much movement can the crankshaft move backwards and to, towards the front of the engine. Now, some engines actually might have a, a thrust bearing that's more like this. I have my main bearing, and this is a lot smaller, so don't be confused by the size. This is off of a 1.4 liter engine, and this is a 5.7 liter engine. Um, but I'm just showing you an example of a main bearing that has the thrust bearings um, uh, or thrust washers installed on the side. So you would call this a thrust bearing. And it would typically, it's in the, the middle of the, the main bearings. That's usually where you see these installed. And um, if, if this were out of specification, some of the conditions that you may, uh, uh, the customer may state they have a problem with, if during acceleration there's a heavy clunking noise, the customer begins to accelerate and we hear a clunking. What you're hearing is the crankshaft move to the back of the engine, clunk against the bearing and make that noise. Now if they hear a clunking noise during acceleration that doesn't mean it is exclusively and always the thrust bearing but that's a good indication. If you can isolate it to an engine related noise you know it's in the engine acceleration problem it's going to be your thrust bearings so now we're going to set this up in order to uh, appropriately measure the end play um, I just wanted to point out what where these bearings are and uh, their names and, and some of the types that are there alright so I've now set up a, a dial indicator in order to measure the um, crankshaft end play um, so that the amount of movement how far the crankshaft moves in that direction how far it moves in this direction um, I've put all of the uh, main bearing caps in they've been torqued to the the appropriate specification and uh, now end play can be measured you're going to want to have some type of a suitable prying device in order to move the crankshaft in, in both directions. You want to find a, a good place to pry against, making sure that we're not prying against any machine surfaces, we're not scratching any, uh, any part on the block that uh, is a sealing surface. 
Um, so we're going to use that to move it back and forth. So if we look right here on our dial indicator, we're going to set it up first. So I'm going to move the crankshaft all the way to its rearmost movement. So that's as far back as the crankshaft will go. I've got the dial indicator set right here on the end of the crankshaft and I'm going to go ahead and zero it out. So that's the farthest back it will go. Now I'm going to move the crankshaft in the other direction and I should be able to see um, the difference or the clearance. So we can see this particular dial indicator reads every one thousandth of an inch. So we're right here on the six. So this crankshaft end plate is six thousandths of an inch. The minimum is five thousandths and the maximum is twenty-two thousandths. So we're within specification and this crankshaft would pass the end play um, test.